This Corgi Austin Martin DB5 was sent to me by a subscriber named Travis from Australia. I've had a lot of people ask me if I would consider making some videos on larger scale models like this Corgi, so I decided to make a video on this one and see what people thought. This DB5 is in pretty good shape other than the paint and oxidation. It's all here, even the passenger with the gun. I put him away off camera so I wouldn't lose him. As many of you probably are aware, this car has a lot of extra options on it that the original DB5 did not have. This includes a ram and machine guns on the front, a bulletproof shield in the back, and a passenger eject option for those moments you really just want to listen to your music and not someone else's. These cars are made just like 164 scale vehicles from today. To take one apart, you need only drill out the rivet and tap the post to accept the small button screw for when you put the car back together later. Internally, this car is much more complex than most, given all the extra features it has. In fact, the engineering on this is rather impressive. It reminds me a lot of mask toys from the 80s. These were cars that also had a lot of pop-out weapons. Most would transform into another vehicle. If you take one of those apart, you may also be taken back by the amount of engineering used for a toy, all during a time before advanced CAD programs like SOLIDWORKS were around. The internal parts of this car are in good shape. The only thing broken is a small plastic part holding down the rear axle. No big deal as the axle is also covered by the internal plastic seats. As normal, I'd like to start with the body and remove the paint with aircraft paint stripper. The paint on this car was rather tough and I had to go with two coats to get off all the paint, but in the end I was able to remove it. With the paint removed, I will start sanding the car and removing any mold lines like the one you see here. This is done using emery boards and sanding paper. Some mold lines like this one on the back I'll leave in as the mold line is integrated with other details. Removing it would be rather difficult without messing up those other details. Once the car has been sanded, it's time to prime the body using Tamiya Gray Primer. When the primer dries, I will then paint the car silver. Here I used a silver acrylic paint by Vallejo. To get close to the original color and to provide a very durable surface, I chose to paint the car in gold spectroflame. To get to the correct shade, I kept applying layers of spectroflame. Each layer would darken the color ever so slightly until I reached a match for what I felt was a match for the original color. Given how many layers were applied, I ended up with some orange peel and a small piece of dust that landed on the top while the paint was drying. So to fix all this, I will move to the next step, which as you have guessed, is polishing. Lucky for me, this car is rather simple to polish. The only real issue was to not get complacent. I have run many a paint job in the past when the wheel grabs a hold of a corner and then pulls the car into the spinning chuck of the tool. This typically has catastrophic results, so if you try this, keep that in mind as it only takes a fraction of a second to destroy all your work. So here are the post-polishing results. I was able to remove the orange pill and any dust that had collected on the surface. I can now move to the other parts. I'll start by washing the internal plastic seats with soap, water, and a toothbrush. The driver of this car doesn't look like any 007 I've ever seen. The receding hairline and my lighting sort of combined to give off a geriatric Hitler type look. My guess is they didn't even try for any likeness. But all in all it cleaned up fine. The tires on this old car have long succumbed to dry rot. They're still holding firm but have cracked and flattened over time. Since Travis only plans to display this car, I'll leave on the original tires. They do sell replacements on eBay from time to time and if he wants to he can change them out. For the rest of the base I will wash with soap and water. The windshield is rather dirty and after I washed it I noticed it had fogged up over the years. To remove this I used a buffing wheel on my Dremel and some polishing compound. It took some time but I was able to remove all the fogging and restore the windshield to its former glory. For all the small metal parts, I use a small steel brush to clean and shine them up. I don't want to paint them as I worry the paint might gum up the mechanism of the car, so cleaning off the oxidation is the next best thing. For the bulletproof shield on the back of the car, I decided to polish it a little bit on the polishing wheel. 
I'm now going to move back to the body and mask everything off except the headlights, grill, and bumper. I'm not going to lie, this took some time to do. I'm going to paint these parts with an acrylic silver I use on the body. It's very important here to use acrylic as I'll be using a step later that will not work if I use anything besides acrylic. I will airbrush on the paint and once it dries, take care and remove the masking tape. It is very unlikely that I'll get a perfect masking job with all these small parts clustered together, so I'll use some acrylic thinners and a mini Q-tip to clean up any areas that I need the paint removed. The acrylic thinners will remove the acrylic paint and leave the spectra flame unharmed. I use this technique a lot as a sort of insurance policy as I could remove all the silver paint if I had to, getting me back to the raw spectra flame car I had to start with. While I have the silver paint out, I'll go ahead and paint the ram taking care not to get any paint on the mechanism. I'll also paint the machine guns a gun metal color to help offset them from the other parts of the car. After I'm done painting, I'll gloss clear coat the entire car body and metal parts to protect the silver paint. Once the paint is dried, all it is left to do is to put this rolling jigsaw puzzle back together. As I'm sure you'd all love to watch 45 minutes of complete incompetence in action, I'll deny you this pleasure and just show you the car fully assembled. Speaking of assembly, I'm rather certain Corgi lost a lot of money on the assembly of this car. I'm sure after you put 500 of them together, you would get pretty good, but still, it's a balancing act to say the least. I plan to put a custom license plate on this car later, and we'll probably do a video on just that, but I'm waiting on some clear decal paper to arrive before I make that video. Please let me know below if you want to see more of these larger scale cars. I do have several of them, and they are fun to restore. I don't want my channel to swerve too far out of the 164 scale cars, but I am okay with doing these cars on occasions. So let me know below, and as always, thanks for watching. Oh yeah, I forgot this little bad guy. You know every kid lost this guy in the first 5 seconds of owning this car. They hit that side button and then wondered after they got back from the emergency room looking like Emilio Largo what the heck happened to him. Somehow Travis has kept up with him all these years, so I'll place him back in the car and send him on his way. Thanks for watching.